Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. My friends, this is an exciting day. I have done it. I have found the unicorn. I have been saying a fair bit in recent months that I cannot find one single reputable chart analyst who genuinely believes that XRP is not going to do well this market cycle. Now you can find analysts who say, this market cycle, uh, XRP is going to perform for, poorly. It's going to fall out of the top 10. It's a coin you should never hold. It's an S-word coin. Uh, you're getting dr you know, dumped on by... You've heard all the stuff. You can find those analysts, but, but what I'm saying is, up until this point, every single time I found an analyst who is predicting that XRP is going to not perform or do particularly poorly, every single time I found that, when you go back and look at their history, you can see that they have a history of bias against XRP. And why? Well, as always, because reasons. Because reasons, folks. Uh, it just is. And a lot of them are toxic Bitcoin maxi trolls, but it, it is what it is. Their XRP derangement syndrome, it is a real thing. And so I, I've, I've, I've said many times in recent months, I cannot find a reputable analyst who's been around for a while, at least for a cycle, who says XRP is not going to do well and also does not, has not demonstrated publicly any sort of uh, bias against XRP uh, in, in terms of what it is. So you can you can talk about bias in a couple ways in terms of what it is. I don't like uh, what it allegedly does, this and that. So you're talking from a utility side, or you can have a bias in terms of what it's going to do in the charts. In this moment, what I'm saying is, uh, if you I, I couldn't find somebody who didn't have a bias in terms of what XRP functionally is that also said it's going to do poor. So um, this analyst is warning, and I'll give you the specifics in a second, but he's warning it's going to go down uh, to 13 cents and below this year or early next year. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, I'll say this. Even... If, but right before I share with you a lot of what he had to say, even if he's correct, and he does have truly a minority position in this, but if he's correct, and I'll, I'll say he could be, sometimes the improbable happens, uh, it will change nothing for me personally. If XRP drops lower, and it's just because of uh, people bouncing off one another, as typically happens in irrational markets, and it's just purely speculation and nothing is fundamentally wrong with XRP, I will continue to hold, because my bet won't change. After XRP hit its all-time high in 2018, I said either it's going to zero one day or it's going to hit a new all-time high, but it's not going to flutter about sideways forever. The fact it's been consolidating for six years, yeah, that can happen. That did happen. That's where we are now. It's close to six and a half at this point. But it cannot and will not just stay here forever. Either we're right and it's worth a fortune or we're wrong. So even if we see a breakdown, if it's not because of something fundamentally wrong with XRP, I will endure the decrease in my net worth even if he's right. But I'm skeptical of that. Um, and so um, I also want to highlight this before going. So the, the blockchain backer, by the way, uh, he put out a video today. And, you know, his, his, so he's very even keeled, I'd say. You know, if he starts to talk about getting a little bit excited, there's, there's truly good reason. He's very careful about the way that he presents information. And I respect that about him. I think that's great. Uh, because when he does start to say, hey, I'm getting excited which he doesn't normally do, you know he really means it, and you know that you should be paying attention here. And so he has actually been jumping into the market right now. And he's talked about how even XRP specifically, if you look at it in terms of uh, the chart formation, in terms of Wyckoff accumulation, he's talked about how this is probably the part where it's the spring phase towards the end of the Wyckoff accumulation cycle before you get to the sign of strength, uh, which would be after a, a notable impulse to the upside. And so he thinks that's where we are. And so I see comments like that from most analysts out there. Almost, all, in fact, almost all of them. I, I found the one exception here today. So just to be clear, just because I'm, I'm highlighting this, it's because I am not afraid on my channel to share diverse opinions, uh, even if it sounds negative about XRP. And so we're talking about uh, chart analyst Alessio Restani. And I have, I've highlighted his work on my channel before, and I think he is absolutely great. He is fantastic. He is, as far as I can tell, absolutely intellectually honest. He has a massive following. Um, on X, it's 67,900 followers, and yes, that's a lot, but on YouTube, he's got like 385,000 subscribers, as you can see right here. So here's the video he put out the other day, and so I watched this video yesterday. It's called XRP is in Trouble. Here's why. 
altcoin analysis. And he, he did a full breakdown. So let me share with you some thoughts and some key hi highlights from this. And if you want to get into the actual technical analysis in terms of wave count and this and that, you should watch his video. But I, I got to tell you, Alessio is not an XRP hater. And he is not making any predictions about XRP price action or news uh, based on news or utility. This is not about XRP news, even if there's some news with the lawsuit, the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit, and it's not about uh, XRP's functionality. And that's why I said what I said a couple minutes ago. This is why even if he's right, I'm not changing anything I'm doing. I'm just going to keep holding my XRP because my investment thesis is and will continue to be utility matters and will win the day. And if I'm wrong about people caring about coins being useful, then so be it. But I do not believe that for a second. And so to be clear, he is only talking about what he has seen in the charts, chart formations. That's it. Nothing else, to be clear here. And, and he has no history of hating on XRP that I'm aware of. I've seen nothing. And he insists that he has no feelings about it. He spent probably two or three minutes in this video making that very clear, probably tr to try and head off any attacks that he's just, he just isn't a hater, this or that. And that's good that he did, because as far as I can tell, again, that's true. And in fact, to drive the point home, in fact, in you know after the 2020 SEC lawsuit resulted in XRP price dropping to you know 16 or 17 cents, whatever the low was right after that news broke, he publicly stated and made a, a YouTube video about this, that he was long XRP at that time. And this is like several days or so, whatever it was, um, after the lawsuit, after after the price of XRP had plummeted, he said he was long XRP. And it was based on the charts then too. It wasn't about the news. It wasn't about utility. It was about the charts then, and it's about the charts now for him. And um, he, he, you know, he called for XRP to break all the way up to $1.30. And, and people thought he was insane for that call, given the news with the SEC. You had all sorts of people like Rand Nooner and the bunch. XRP, ah, it's gonna fall out of the, it's gonna fall out of the top ten. You had Michael chart analyst Michael Vandepop, one of the most popular analysts in, in crypto, uh, saying, yeah, well, you know, XRP, you know, it's just, it's, it's not gonna do anything. You know, if X, I can't remember the prices he put out now, but he's like, if Bitcoin goes to so and so number, it might have been like hundreds of thousand dollars. Uh, that means that XRP will maybe spike up to fifty cents or something. It was, it's some silly like that, whatever the numbers were. But, but of course, as we well know, XRP ultimately broke much higher than even Alessio Rastani expected, ultimately hitting $2 last cycle, despite the artificial price suppression because of the SEC. Fewer people bought XRP than would have. They were warded off because of all that scariness surrounding the lawsuit, very clearly, which is why XRP was the only top 10 coin by market cap last cycle that going into the bull run did not hit a new all-time high. It's the only one. Well, isn't that a coincidence? But eh, still, he is not currently bullish on XRP, and he thinks that this year, or early next year, 2025, XRP will revisit 13 cents. And he, he thinks this is very probable. That came across loud and clear to me when watching this video. It is, uh, you know, he, he, he says he thinks that, you know, the 2020 lows for XRP need to be retested for support. Now, mind you, the 2020 low for XRP was like 10 cents. <laughs> um, however, he says this will only happen if, and so here's the qualifier, what will, what will precipitate all of this occurring? It will only happen if XRP breaks below 35 cents. So he acknowledges that XRP is range bound to a certain degree. But he says, if XRP breaks below 35 cents, it's like, hold on to your hats, basically. It's going to be breaking down very quickly if that level is breached. And he says... That would be the level that needs to be hit. So again, in order for XRP to have a much more massive breakdown, ultimately to 13 cents, and not that it would get the 13 cents in one go. Uh, he made it pretty clear that he thinks there could be a pit stop after a very steep drop, maybe around 20 to 22 cents. But after that, yeah, he thinks that it would continue to 13 cents. And and I'll just, just let me pause to say one thing real quick here. If we're in the position where Bitcoin's going to break down and the market's not going to run, then some crazy breakdown for XRP, if it's happening to the rest of the market, whether or not it's to this degree, I'd be like, well, yeah, I mean, if Bitcoin's going down to whatever degree, I don't know if that means he'd be right about 13 cents. But if we're talking about a continuation to the upside and expansion in equities as well as crypto markets, the idea 
of XRP being the party pooper that sits on the sidelines like, no, I don't want to go up in price. I want to go down. Like The idea of that happening makes no sense. Expansion is expansion is expansion. And in every cycle where there's been expansion, XRP has followed. So if you think there's not going to be expansion, well, okay, if you're right about that, then yeah, let's see how low XRP and everything else goes then. Everything's on fire then, you know? I just don't find that to be probable, though I, I tend to not speak in absolutes and so I won't hear. He could be right. I do not find this compelling. And in this case, there's probably a reason that he's in the minority here. Uh, but, but to be clear, again, I have respect for this guy. I, I, I think he really does good work, but in, when you're talking about chart activity, it's about what's most probable, not certain. And sometimes the improbable happens, and sometimes people are just outright wrong in terms of the way they're reading charts. You know, we're all human. But uh, he, so again, he, he does think it is highly probable this will happen. So what would invalidate his expectation of XRP dropping that low? Well, if, if XRP rips above his level, he cited here, 74.8 cents, then he believes the move to the downside is no longer likely. So XRP's range bound right now, and so you, the level he's talking about is basically from about 35 cents to about 75 cents. Anywhere in there, that's not, okay, we're still good. Breaks below 35 cents, to the downside. Breaks above 75 cents, moves to the upside, right? That, that's basically what he's saying. He's just saying that we're waiting for XRP to break to the upside or downside, and, and that specific point, on that specific point, frankly, that's what every analyst on the planet has been saying. You know, the difference here is that Alessio is the only, only reputable, non-XRP hating analyst I've ever come across who believes that downside price action is more probable this market cycle. And it's just amazing to me, and that's why I've said, I, and I've said this many times in recent months, I said, look, I cannot find one single reputable analyst who doesn't hate XRP <laughs> that says it's not going to be uh, behaving well this market cycle. I can't find one. And I also said, I'm not saying that person doesn't exist. In fact, to the contrary, I said, there are so many humans on this planet. I bet that person does exist. I just don't know who it is. Introduce, bring them to me. I want to meet this person. And I would not have guessed that it's Alessio Rastani, but it is, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And if he, if he is right, then I'll give him all the credit in the world. And I'll even bring up this video. I'll be like, he's the one voice that ended up getting over. I will highlight, if that happens, I will highlight that. And I still don't think that would be the end of the world even that. Because I think ultimately, big picture, you know, bigger crypto pie, if XRP is useful, money will follow it. That doesn't change with me. That, I, that, that's that. But he does think in the short term, we will see a massive impulsive move down to 35 uh, to, to 40 cents in the short term. Um, in fact, uh, in the video, he said that he expects it to occur, the, the breakdown, within the next several months, perhaps even with, uh, in the, the next several weeks. And he, now to discard the because... I do believe he's being intellectually honest. I, I really do. He acknowledges that he could be wrong. He said that, again, if XRP gets about 75 cents, uh, which, by the way, he said that would be a miracle in his video. He used that word miracle. So he made it get crystal clear. He does not think this is going to happen uh, as far as XRP moving to the upside. But if it does, it'd be a miracle. And then XRP, he says at that point, would likely retest the 2021 highs uh, near $2. But he strongly expressed doubt that such price action will develop. And in, in fact, he, you know, he said even if the 2021 high around $2 is tested, it will correct heavily to the downside from there. Uh, so he says even then, you know, he didn't even talk about all-time highs. Like, it just breaks down from there. So that means he doesn't think that there would be an XRP all-time high no matter what. That's astonishing to me. You know, he thinks... Uh, <laughs> And again, he thinks it'll happen within the next several weeks, perhaps, but certainly within the next several months, uh, you're going to start seeing this. So, we we found the unicorn. <laughs> well, the unicorn does exist. Um, and again, nothing against the guy. I'm a fan still. Uh, I, I hope he's wrong. I, I just... Like, I understand sometimes minority opinions are correct here, but, they're, like, chart analysts have been coming out of the woodwork to highlight why they're wrong. Like Dark Defender and E. Greg Crypto, Bobby. There's just there's been a ton. I don't even need to name them all. There's 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 been a bunch of analysts. They're just like ah, I don't know about this. And the many of them have gone to great lengths to respectfully articulate why they why they disagree. 
And all of them, and I was happy to see this because, I mean, it means that my opinion, I'm not the only one who had his opinion. They all uh, made it very clear they actually really respect this guy because he is good at what he does. He is intellectually honest. He's not just some hater. He's just looking at what he sees in the charts. So hopefully he's just wrong here. But look, again, if the blockchain backers are right, um, and again, I don't want to put words in his mouth. It just seems like you could tell that he's, because he just started to enter the market. He said, you know, he started longing the market basically and, and started making some purchases, more crypto uh, currencies recently. If his suspicions are right, um, I, and, and that's what most, an, that's like pretty much every analyst that I follow that's reputable thinks. And we do ultimately see a bigger moves to the upside and ultimately expansion. So you'll want to see, you know, the small cap stocks, look at the Russell 2000, you want to see that expand. Um, <laughs> because it's basically like NVIDIA <laughs> leading the stock market right now, which is kind of silly, but it's reality. Uh, you you want to see uh, ultimately altcoins you know, kind of as a whole break, but, but you have seen some of that. And so that's the type of stuff that uh, the blockchain backer was highlighting in his video today. And and on the flip side, Alessio Rastani, what he was saying in one of his most recent video the other day about Bitcoin is that he expects a break to the downside. So it's not just XRP that he expects a break to the downside, though he was uh, very clear about that leading into next year. But in, even in the short term, at least for Bitcoin, he thinks there's going to be a breakdown back into the 50,000s, somewhere around there. So, okay. But, e you know, even if that happens, that doesn't mean it's like the end of this cycle or anything like that. So I just wanted to share this with you because like I said earlier in the video, I am not afraid to share negative sounding, scary sounding news on the channel and just discuss it. And I just wanted to share some thoughts because, you know, worst case scenario, like even if he's right, it doesn't mean XRP ceases to exist. It doesn't mean the utility goes away. It doesn't mean that developers stop building on the XRP ledger. It just means speculators are speculating, causing wild volatility, which is historically normal in the world of crypto. And it's not what we want to see, especially given that XRP hasn't hit a new all-time high in about six and a half years, but we don't get to control that. And so this is also why I'm very happy that I have broad exposure. Although XRP, yes, is my largest individual holding and my favorite cryptocurrency, and I admit that I'm biased. Most certainly I am at this point. I used to be a blank slate, though, and I use logic and reason to get to this point. But uh, even though it's my favorite coin, my largest holding, I hold 42 different cryptocurrencies because I've been in the space a long time here. And I, it's, I, I feel even better just having broader exposure. So, it's like, so that's one more thing that makes it that much easier to endure, um, I think, for anyone, dips on individual coins. So even if that happens, I'll be like, eh. Because, you know, even if, like, I lost all of my XRP somehow and it was just stolen from me or hacked or something, I have enough of everything else that I'm still good. And so by a lot, XRP is my largest individual holding, tr truly by a lot. But I'd rather, if I could pick just my XRP or the other 41 coins, I'd pick the other 41 coins because I want broad exposure. I'm just being honest with you, but it doesn't mean XRP is not my favorite. It is. And so I'm just saying, even that's what I'm making a point with this. The point is, even if he's right and XRP goes down and let's say the market does take off to the downside and XRP is like, but I don't want to go up in price. Okay, fine. Then I'm still good. So there, there's all sorts of reasons that I'm not worried about this because I, I, I can't I can't know for sure which coins will be winners and losers. I'm, I'm sure that many of the coins I hold now, if you fast forward a couple decades, they'll be worth zero dollars. But I'm just living through this and expecting market expansion. I'm speculating. And I think that there will be some coins I hold that will truly have long-term viability. And I do believe XRP is probable to be one of those. For sure. It's functionally useful. Unless it ceases to be useful, then I'll change my mind. Of course. If people, if we see a decline in people using it and adoption and all those metrics and everything that matters, yeah. Yeah, then I'd change my tune. But I'm, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing all, everything move to the right way, the right direction. And after having over six years of consolidation to think that XRP is going to sit on the sideline, it's just, it's just really hard for me to believe. I do not believe that's, that's probable. And again, there's only one analyst I found here. It's Alessio Rastani that thinks that it does make sense, that it will move to the downside. And if he's right, he's right. But uh, kind of skeptical of that. You guys let me know what you think. I just wanted to share my two cents on this. And again, um, you know, I, I, I intentionally did not break down his technical analysis. Just go check out his video if you want to do that. I try and do as little of that as possible. I just wanted to share some of the key highlights. And then I wanted the rest of the video to be what it ultimately was, which was just sharing some thoughts on this, articulating why I'm not fearful of this, even if he's right, which I'm skeptical of. He could be right. Um, it's it's it ain't going to ruin <laughs> ain't going to ruin my life. I'll tell you that. In fact, if XRP actually goes that low, and I think I will think that people are being so irrational, even I will probably buy XRP again. I haven't bought XRP since October 2000, uh, 2020. 
because I like went on a bit of a buying spree and I was like, if I don't stop now, I have a problem. So I, I did stop. I haven't bought XRP in almost four years, but even I, if, if it goes that low, as long as there's no sort of fundamental change uh, in terms of XRP adoption, those types of things, I would be enticed to buy more while, while everybody's fearful. So anyway, I'll stop yapping. You guys let me know what you think about this, but I am just not fearful in the least. I do. I would be surprised if XRP hits 13 cents, uh, but I'm not going to speak in absolutes here because I typically don't. And I'll acknowledge it's possible, but I think it's almost certainly not going to happen if we see expansion in the market. Now, if, again, if, if we see a Black Swan event and everything breaks down, all bets are off at that point, And then I'd be like, well, okay, fine. Then it's not crazy. Outside of that, though, eh. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.